Hi everybody, Steven here, I'm back. So, you don't know what vMotion is, and even better, you don't know how to configure it. Well, stick around, I'll talk about what vMotion is, kind of how it works underneath the covers, and what we need, and we'll actually build it in my environment, and we'll do a vMotion of a VM. So stick around, we'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye. So, what is vMotion? Why don't we jump right into it? Let me just get my iPad uh, going here. So, what is vMotion? I just got the one slide. Uh, by the way, if this is stuff you're interested in, hey, I'd appreciate it if you're subscribed to the channel. It helps me out, helps me bring more content to the channel. So, um, so let's jump right into it. So, what vMotion is, real quick, is I'm going to move a VM from one ESXi host to another ESXi host. Okay while the VM is running. So my end users are still talking to that VM. So that's a live migration. The VM is powered on. Now, in order for this to work, there's a couple things that are required. First of all, the VM, if you watch my little video on VMs are virtual machines, or sorry, VMs are virtual machines. VMs are basically just a bunch of files. One of the things is that VM's files must sit on shared storage. This is for a true vMotion, folks. Okay, I know people are saying, well, it doesn't. It's um, for a true vMotion, right? So this storage has to be shared between each of these hosts, and the VM's files reside there. Okay? This way, when the VM comes over here, it's very quick. The other thing that we, we're not copying very large files, the other thing we need is a network between those. And this would be a vMotion network. And what is a vMotion network? vMotion network is a network that you've chosen or designed or whatever. And it's going to be basically a VM kernel port, VM kernel, I'll say VM kernel, whatever number. And it's got to be enabled for vMotion traffic. Okay. So. Uh, what you'll do is you'll create a virtual switch on each of the hosts or you'll use an existing one you get tons of flexibility you'll go onto there you'll create a vm kernel port on each of the hosts whatever number it is one two whatever uh, you'll assign it an ip address and then at that point uh, you'll enable it for vmotion traffic and i'll show you there's a couple options there and then now when we go to do a vmotion all that information will be fired across this network you do not want to use your management network for this, okay? When I say, for example, if your management network's on, like, it's really simple for me to go on a management network, VM kernel zero, enable vMotion. It works, but potentially what's happened, you're dumping a lot of data down this network, you might lose contact with that host during that vMotion. So you really want to kind of stay away, make a separate network. Hey, if you could do a physical separate network, hey, all the power to you, right? You know, uh, but a lot of times that can't be done, right? So uh, you'll have a separate VLAN, let's say. So you'll have a port group on here for a vMotion VLAN, like VLAN whatever. Uh, and, uh, and then this vMotion network will be on its own isolated VLAN, which is great. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So why don't we go ahead and actually go through and configure these VM kernel ports and then get our vMotion going, okay? So stick around, I'm gonna show you in the demo in a second. Okay, so let's jump into setting up our, our uh, network. So I actually just did a video on uh, creating a VM. So uh, let's do our vMotion. So I've actually got VM Win 10, it's running on host one. Okay, we can see it's underneath there. So before we start our vMotion stuff, what we need to do is set up our vMotion network. Actually, before I even do that, I need to make sure that this thing is set up on shared storage. Now, uh, I'm going to click on my host. I'm going to migrate it from host one to host two, okay? How about that? So I'm going to click on host one. I'm going to say data stores. Host one sees two data stores. One of them is site A shared 01. Let's look at host two. It has access to site A shared 01. Same thing with, with 03 because I set that up in my iSCSI video. Well, let's click on Windows 10. See what data store it's on. It's set on um, shared site A shared 01. And again, if you watch that video, you'll see I actually picked that. So one of the requirements for true vMotion is, again, shared storage. I know I might get some people debating me on that, but that's the true definition of vMotion. I know there's other storage vMotions and stuff like that. 
Anyways, I'm going to go in and create my, my vMotion network. So what I'm going to do, since I'm, since I'm dealing with distributed switches in my lab environment, um, if I wasn't, I'd have to go into each host and either create a new virtual switch and link it to a physical card uh, and create a vMotion port group on there. Uh, you know, and I would do that on each host. Or since I'm playing with a distributed switch, it makes it easier. I'm going to right click on the distributed switch. I'm going to say new port group, distributed port group, new port group. And I'm just going to call it um, PG V Motion, port group V Motion on my distributed switch. It looks good. I go next. I'm just going to accept the defaults. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not doing any type of uh, VLANing. In your environment, you'd probably be doing VLAN, so you'd specify the, your V Motion VLAN here. Uh, I'm not, so I'm just going to select next. And then at that point, I say finish, and I got a vMotion port group. So now what do I need to do? I now need to create a VM kernel port for each of these hosts uh, on that port group. So now I have to go at the host level. So let's go into host one. Let's go into configure. Let's go into VM kernel adapters. And you'll see I've got some VM kernel adapters here already. So uh, what's my VM kernel network? It'll be... Um, yeah, it'll be 30, whatever. Add networking. I'm going to say it's a VM kernel adapter. Uh, I'm going to say select an existing network. Uh, this option gives me to put it onto a port group on a distributed switch, which I just created that port group. So there's my vMotion port group. I'll go next. Now it's asking me the MTU size. Uh, I, realistically, I'd probably in a real world cr crank this up to 9,000, but your physical network needs to support this. So just don't do that unless you know uh, it is by default. Now, notice over here, I can select, pick vMotion services and click next. That would work, okay? Um, what I like to do is from the TCP, I, the TCP IP stack is select the vMotion IP stack. Notice the vMotion is automatically selected and nothing else is being used in there. This loads a separate IP stack on the host, so it's, a, it's got its own ARP table, its own default gateway. I find that better because now it's not going to interfere with a stack of management and all that stuff. So we're not gonna kinda have all that running in the same memory, let's say. So it's a separate type of IP stack that's unloaded on that host. If you're really restricted or limited on resources, um, maybe the other option of not picking a stack would be better, but I can't, honestly can't really see that. I'm gonna pick the dedicated stack and I'm gonna click next. How do I want to set the IP address for my, v, my vMotion network? I'm going to do it statically. So this will be 172.20. I'll say my vMotion network is 30. Dot, and this is 51. So my vMotion network is going to be the 30 network. 255.255.255.0. If I had a gateway for it, I'd say um, I don't need to override the default. If I had a gateway, I, sorry, I would override the gateway and say here's my default gateway. I'm not going to be vMotioning through... Um, uh, through a router in my lab, but you would specify it in your lab environment if you are. I'm going to click next. I'm going to say finish. That's it. I just set up host one. I need to repeat that process on all my hosts that I plan on vMotioning to. I'll do it on host two and three. So let's go into add networking, VM kernel, uh, pick my vMotion port group. Uh, I'm going to pick the def I'm going to pick the vMotion stack. I'm going to make it static. 172.20.30.52.255.255.255. Oops, dot O. And I'm not going to bother overriding that. And next, last time, last one here. And then I'll go add networking, VM kernel. I'll pick my vMotion port group. Here we go. Again, I'm going to pick my vMotion IP stack. All that stuff gets grayed out. Great. I'm going to go into here now, 172.20.30.53, that's host 3, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, and I'm not going to worry about the default gateway for that, I don't plan on vMotion, so there we go, let's do a vMotion, okay, now before I do that, uh, let me just open the console of this, and uh, I'm going to start up a command prompt, actually, sorry, let me log into my... So there's my virtual machine that I'm sitting on right here. So I got to make sure I'm on the right console. I'm going to ping, ping www.youtube.com. Oops, can't type or spell. Okay, I'm going to have a constant ping running to YouTube. 
let me uh, close this. Let's migrate it. So uh, I'm going to right click on the VM. I'm going to pick migrate. It's going to ask me, what do I want to do? Change the uh, compute resource only. That's a true vMotion. Do I want to just change the storage only? That's a storage vMotion. Do I want to change both compute and storage? That's really kind of, uh, these to be called, I think it was called enhanced vMotion. Doesn't really matter. It's a combination of the both. And then cross vCenter server export is migrating a VM from one vCenter server to another live while the VM's running. Um, and that would, let's pick that one, right? So I can, um, um, I can do this, run it live if I wanted to. And that's kind of a combination of vMotion, storage vMotion. But let's do the first one because that's what we're here for. I'll click next. Um, so it's going to ask me to, it's going to ask me to pick my resources right now. So I'm going to pick host two, click next. Uh, again, because I'm using the distributed switch and these hosts are part of that distributed switch, the port group the VM is plugged into exists at the other host. If I, if I wasn't using distributed switches, if I was using standard switches, I should make sure that that port group exists at the target. If not, it would allow me to change the target port group, right? Um, but I would I could try to enforce that. Now you can schedule it with a higher priority or a lower priority. I've always picked a higher. I guess it, maybe if it's a really busy day, you're during production hours, um, and you're kind of a little limited on resources, you might want to lower the scheduling on this, but I always pick the highest. I'm going to click next and then go finish. And at that point, I just wait for it to occur. Now, uh, you'll, so you'll see it's actually started there. So it's migrating it from host one. We can see it's under host one and it's going to bring it over to host two. Now, uh, my lab environment is not the fastest one on the planet, to be honest with you. Uh, hopefully I'll be upgrading down the road uh, to a true vSphere environment. But anyways, nonetheless, you see it's actually going along and it's copying the memory contents from one host to another, it's making that memory bitmap file that I talked about. That's basically um, um, checking for or making notes of what blocks have changed and then eventually it'll copy all that over and then start a new process up and point it to that now so we'll give it a few seconds it's going along like i said it's not the quickest on my lab environment and i'm kind of pushing a few things over there right now boom it's finished so we see now it's on host two let's open the web console on it come on and let's sign in come on during that process, I might have dropped a couple of packets, and that's generally what v, uh, vMotion uh, is about, okay? It, um, you might drop a packet or two. Now, lab, my lab environment, there we go. So uh, I might have dropped a couple of packets there, right? But I'm actually not seeing anything, but it, so, so that's it. So it's going a little sluggish there <laughs> on that. But that's it, folks. That's vMotion. Now, let me show you another thing. Let me uh, close this console. Uh, let me let me bring it back to host one so I don't have to right click I could do something like this drag and drop I'm going from host two to host one it picked that one for me change resource and give it a few seconds it's validating right sometimes I find if I click that it goes forward uh, and it kind of shows me my consumed memory and all that so I'm saying host one it defaulted to that and I'll I get my production port group I'll schedule it high I hit finish and at that point, it's going to move it back to host one. Okay, give it a, there we go, it started. So you can do drag and drops if you want to as well. So I'll let that go. But hey, if you found this interesting or useful or beneficial, hit that thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and this is the kind of stuff that you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel. Without subscribers, there's no content. Uh, also, uh, I got more NSX stuff coming out. I know I've been doing some vSphere stuff lately. I've had requests for that. Uh, but I have more NSX stuff coming up, disaster recovery, site recovery manager, whole bunch of stuff over the next little while. So uh, stick around. Uh, but thanks again. You have a great evening and see you in the next one. Bye now.